meet me at 12 years old. I lived in Singapore, I was in year seven, went to Tang Cha School, Form 7.3. That was the first year I ever went to a mall alone with my friends and got to go shopping, although I later found out that my mum was spying on me the whole time. <laughs> I loved going home and playing Habit Hotel and Neopets, which were website games which I don't even know exist anymore, dressing up with my sister, making music videos, and rushing home to go on MSN with my friends. Not done. So that year, we had our first social in year seven, and the theme was to go as someone famous. So I was either incredibly lazy or really self-confident because I went as myself in the future because I was going to be a famous rock star. Meet Ming Bridges at 14 years old. I just won a major singing competition and was signed to a management contract. This was one of the first ever magazine shoots I had done. And from winning that competition, I quickly learned what all my flaws were. First of all, that my forehead was apparently too big. So what they would do is they would take a section of my hair and kind of swipe it over my <laughs> face to make a fringe to try and make it look smaller. I found out that my left side was my best side and I should always stand with my left side forward. And I should always stand and point my legs to elongate myself to make myself look more slender, no matter how awkward it made me feel. That year, I went on to release my first Christmas EP and star in an award-winning kids' TV show, where they cut my hair into full bangs to cover my entire forehead. I started feeling more and more isolated at school. Because of my newfound fame, people told me I had changed. So I didn't feel good enough at school, and I didn't feel good enough at work. So I decided to throw myself into my work. This is me at 17. I had left Singapore to go to England to focus all my energy on finishing my last two years of school. But while I was there, I found it very difficult. With my singer status, I was an easy target for bullying. And I very quickly decided I didn't want to be a singer full time because of how self-conscious it made me feel. Every morning when I was there, I'd wake up super early to spray my fringe to the side by myself because I was so self-conscious about my forehead. But it wasn't all bad. I had a great time, went out dancing with my friends, chased boys, got through my exams, made lots of great friends, and got through it all. This is me at 19 years old. I had just moved back to Singapore from England to start my gap year after graduating. And the plan was I was going to sing a little bit, make some money, and then go traveling with my friends. When I first joined my new management company there, they had told me I'd gained a lot of weight, and I was too fat. So the first thing they told me to do was go on a two-week diet eating only meat, which I now know is called the Atkins diet. They later texted me and told me maybe this was a little too harsh and I should do my own research. But at this point, I had never really thought about my body. I love McDonald's and I hated exercise. So by automatically cutting out crappy food and exercising, I lost weight just by being more healthy. But as I became more and more body focused, I started finding articles that I never found interesting, more interesting, such as how to get abs in seven days, what foods to eat to get the perfect body, doing 30-day programs on how to shed weight. I started getting obsessed with trying every single diet, and I read that the optimal calorie count was 1,500. So that's what I would eat a day, and then end up binging at night because I was so hungry, and I didn't understand why. At this point of time, Instagram started getting popular, and I was told to do it for work. And at first, I started posting pictures of what I was doing at work, cool places I'd go to, yummy meals I would eat. But as I became more body confident, I remember this day in particular, I wore a tight t-shirt and a tight skirt, and I posted a photo on Instagram. That day, I didn't eat much. I starved myself, and at night, I had a massive, crazy binge. And as I was slumped on the kitchen floor in my sugar coma despair, my phone started buzzing like crazy. So I checked it, and my photo I posted that morning had went on the Instagram popular page. It had gone viral. And from getting a few likes and a few comments, I was getting thousands of likes and hundreds of comments of people telling me how pretty I was and how I got so slim. 
and I was so happy. I felt such a feeling of acceptance that I'd made it, of achievement. In that moment, I promised myself I would never, ever binge again and that I'd be more strict to my diet than ever because these people loved me for being slim. Meet Ming at 20 years old. I was anorexic. Although I myself and my parents did not think I was anorexic. We thought I was just very, very skinny and had a weird obsession with food. Not in a million years did I think that this would happen to me. I remember going out to eat with my mum and she tried to get me to eat a piece of bread. And I put it in my mouth and I couldn't swallow it. And we both held each other's hands and we cried because we didn't understand what was wrong. I remember going to Topshop and trying on a UK size full skirt and it was too loose for me. And I sat on the floor and looked at myself in the mirror and I was just skin and bone. And I cried because I looked so disgusting but I didn't understand why I just couldn't get myself to eat and put on weight. And all this time, social media kept me going, tell me how great I looked, how everyone wished to be just like me. But I had no room in my head for anything except food and my weight. I didn't see friends. I fought with my parents and I pushed everyone out. I'd spend every day counting down the seconds to my next meal. And every night I'd spend writing down a list of my favorite foods, although I knew I'd never eat them. At this point in time, I had also gone to Taiwan to be a Mandarin pop star, and things only got worse. While I was there, people idolized the fact that I didn't have my period. It was glorified as a sign of how skinny I was. Articles were written about my weight plummeting to 43 kilos, and most nights I would only eat vegetables. But it wasn't just my food that was controlled. Every day was planned down to the second. I'd have dance classes even though I was a very awkward dancer and didn't want to do it. I'd have stage classes teaching me how to walk, how to talk, how to move, where to sing, where to look. I'd have facials every other day to keep my skin as white as snow because tanning was a huge no-no. And I'd have interview classes teaching me all the right things to say. Basically, I had to be anybody else but myself. And as an introverted person, I thought there was something really, really wrong with me as they kept pushing me to be more and more extroverted. I had to be the cleverest, the craziest, the cutest, the most attractive, the smartest, the funniest person. And with my diet, it was just too exhausted and I couldn't do it. I wasn't just a singer anymore. I was an entertainer. I was a puppet. And I just didn't have the capacity to myself to do it. All I wanted to do after a long day was to crash on the couch and chill out. But I was forced to go out and mingle with cool people. And all this time, everyone was looking into my life and telling me how lucky I was, how grateful I should be to be where I was. But no one really knew how much I was suffering. This is me at 22 years old. My body had started to give up all my attempts to starve, and I started to gain weight. I wake up every morning at 5 a.m. to do three hours of dragon boat training before school just to try and stay skinny but this slowly became too much. I remember going to Malaysia to do a cover shoot for a magazine, and whilst I was changing, I could hear two guys outside talking about how fat I'd gotten and how I was too fat for the shoot. And at this time, I had only gained a few kilos, so I was still severely underweight. When the magazine article came out, my friends called me up, saying how proud I must be to be on a magazine cover and how great I looked. But all I could think about was that I was too fat and I wasn't good enough. Prior to the shoot, I had starved myself for five days, only eating a few mouthfuls of dinner. But I still had wished I had starved myself more. I really thought I'd have to diet for the rest of my life to be accepted. At this point, I had then spiraled into a cycle of starving myself for days and then binging like crazy. And I quickly gained 40 kilograms in two years. I was so ashamed of myself that I couldn't post on Instagram. My Instagram was flooded with throwback photos of when I was skinny. And when I did post a photo of how I actually looked, I was greeted with compliments like, what happened? And, are you pregnant? <laughs> I remember going on Singapore Airlines and an air steward came up to me and asked me if I was Ming Bridges' sister. Of course, I don't blame them because I looked so different. 
But at that moment in time, I was so humiliated. I was so, so sad. I didn't want to be alive anymore. I hated myself. I isolated, I isolated myself from the entire world, didn't see friends, and told myself I could only go outside again once I was good enough, once I was skinny enough. Once I finally did lose a little bit of weight, I released a song, because before that, I wasn't allowed to release any music because of how out of image I was. When I had my music conference, lots of press came, and the next day, I was happy to find that I had my first full-page newspaper article written about me. But when I opened it up to read it, I saw this picture on the front with a picture they had taken of me that day, and quickly realized the article was not about my music, but it was about my weight. I went on detox retreats. I saw hypnotherapists, did acupuncture, had personal trainers. I even got certified as a holistic health practitioner. But take it from someone who's tried everything. None of that works. Because I was so focused on my body, I just kept getting fatter and fatter. In the end, I gave up and went to a hospital for eating disorders. With the help of a therapist, I managed to separate my self-worth from my weight. But it took a lot of deep brainwashing and soul searching. Meet me at 24. <laughs> I love this picture. I was so happy because this is the first birthday in five years that I didn't starve myself and I got to eat all my yummy birthday food. My parents brought me out and we stuffed ourselves silly with Japanese food and we were so happy we'd all come out the other side together. I dyed my hair blue just because I wanted to and I surrounded myself with friends who loved me for who I truly was. I grew up and realized what really mattered and that it wasn't my weight. Every day I learned more and more about the importance of knowing myself. And accepting myself for who I am has made the greatest difference in my life. The more I know myself, the easier it is not to get swayed by what other people are doing or what other people think I should be doing. To think about the amount of times I've gone on a diet because I've read an article or watched a documentary or taken advice from someone because it worked for them, not even stopping to question if the same advice would work for me. If I can get you guys to take away anything today, it would be that there's no point being anyone else but yourself. I wasted five years of my life trying to be someone I wasn't, and I'm only now trying to make that time up. But the thing is, it's still a daily battle for me and for most people out there, because media is no longer just in magazines and in movies. Media is all around us. It's in our hands. Media is us, and we're not posting reality. We're pasting the best of the best of our lives. I need you to step away from that and try and figure out who you are because who you are on the screen and who you are on Instagram is never the same person. I have so many celebrity friends on Instagram who look like they're having the best lives ever, but the most of them are depressed, have eating disorders, no periods, just because they feel they have to be that way. The key is to go on your own journey question things, find out who you are, and surround yourself with people who are going to help you find out who you are. And read. Read lots and lots of books. If anyone needs any suggestions, I've read a lot, so just ask me. Take advice, be inspired, learn things, but know your intentions and know who you are. Because at the end of the day, this is your life and you've got to do you. I feel truly blessed to have had all the opportunities I have had and be able to be here to share them with you today so that maybe you can learn from what I've learned. Thank you very much.